it's a whip update video so I do have a finished object and some whips. This is a pretty cardigan heavy episode so if you're into cardigans for 2024 you might want to stick around. Welcome back to the Knit Weekend Podcast, or if this is your first time finding me, welcome. My name is Haley. I'm a Nashville, Tennessee knitter, knitter in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> We're off to a great start. And this is my uh, time and space where we just nerd out about all things knitting and fiber. So um, I hope that that is up your alley. If you found this podcast, it probably is. And um, yeah, so stick around. I have lots to talk about today. It's admittedly been a little longer than I intended. Um, I had hoped to put out kind of like a non-whip knitting thoughts related video in February. I just didn't get there. Um, so before we get to all the whips, just some updates there. Um, to be quite honest with you, February was a little bit of a tough month and I just didn't feel like the best version of myself for the better part of the month. So. Um, I thought you might not want to spend very much time with me in those moments. I was admittedly a little weepy. Um, if you've been here for any length of time, you will know that I uh, lost my mom back in the fall. And for some reason in February, it just hit me really hard. So I think first of all, it was my first birthday without her and uh, the big 3-9. <laughs> Not necessarily the easiest birthday looking at then looking at 40, not so far ahead, but also just really missing her um, this time of year. So just trying to be accepting of that grieving process and know that it comes in waves and the fog eventually did lift. Um, if you have lost a parent or loved one recently, which I know several of you have reached out to me um, on Instagram to share. You've gone through something similar as well. And I'm um, just sending my love to you. It is a process. There are good days. There are bad days. There are days where you cry all day long. Um, but anyway, just sending my love to anybody out there who is in a similar situation. And, um, but all that being said, I did have some fun knitting related adventures in February. Um, the highlight of which had to be my trip to Cincinnati to visit with my friend Sherelle, you and, and Lauren. Um, you would know Sherelle through her YouTube channel, Wooly Locks, um, which I will mention down below. Now, Sherelle, have you put out another video since episode two? If not, this is your reminder to film episode three and get that out there to the world. Um, Sherelle and Lauren and also my friend Kat and I met last February in Louisville and um, we decided to do a reboot 2.0. Now Kat has moved to Washington, as you all probably know if you've watched and I've talked on and on about missing her. Um, but anyway, I decided to head north with my aunt, who's also a knitter. And along the way, we stopped at the Woolery in Frankfurt and um, also a local yarn store in Cincinnati, which we would have hit more. They just weren't open while we were there um, or during the hours that we could visit. It was pretty startling to realize you can have more than one yarn store in a city. <laughs> we don't have that in Nashville. We have just the one. Um, so... Anyway, it was a great trip. Sherelle has a monthly knit and chat group um, that she invited to join or invited me to join. And I'd say there were about 15 of us. It was such a lovely afternoon. We had fun just chatting and looking at what everybody was knitting. Um, I think I even had a couple people knit a few rows on my project because they wanted to try out the yarn that I was using. Um, so yeah, it was just such a, such a lovely weekend and you will see some video clips of that throughout this episode. I'll kind of use it as a buffer between the sections. Um, anyway, so other shout outs and recommendations that I would like to give because the reason that I am here and doing these videos is because of how much I just absolutely adore this community, 
want to strengthen and be a part of this community in any way that I can. And one way that I can do that very easily is by sharing with you all some things that I'm enjoying. So um, two podcast recommendations for you this week. One is the Knit LA podcast. Um, these are both going to be linked down below. And this is Andrea. She is so fun. Um, I recent, I guess I discovered her podcast about a month or so ago. And um, if you haven't watch definitely check it out she and I were on like this bizarre same knitting vibe where we've been knitting the same projects and kind of making me giggle to think like wow we've are really in sync here despite living halfway across the country from each other um and she has recently debuted her first pattern um which is the party bow it is this stellar maybe I'll put a photo of it here um, it is this stellar, iconic piece that I have no idea we will see, no doubt that we will see uh, many people knit up. It is knit in the Lamb and Kid yarns, uh, which I am excited about because in May I'm planning a trip to visit some family in Washington and I have every intention of going to the Lamb and Kid, probably buying the yarn to knit the party bow. Um, where am I going to wear it? I don't know. I'm going to have to like make an occasion to wear it, but that's okay. We'll figure that all out later. Um, the next recommendation, sorry, I have some notes, which is why I am looking over here. Um, oh, is the Allie Makes Things podcast. Okay. This is another new podcaster. I think she only maybe has three or four episodes out. This is somebody that I've decided I just want to be friends with. Allie, can we, if you watch this, can we please be friends? Um, she seems so cool. Uh, also, her dad is her number one fan, which I can totally relate to. Um, as a side note, if anybody makes a comment to my dad in a, down below, then he does have a tendency to answer you, and it really is my dad. It is not probably not a bot. I will double check them to make sure, um, but it really is my dad. And, um, you know, I just think that's sweet. So any podcaster whose dad is their number one fan that gets my vote for sure. Um, Allie also just has a really great sense of creativity and color. Uh, she's a writer. She has book recommendations. So I think you'd really enjoy her podcast and you should definitely check it out. Um, all right. Oh, we can't forget about our year long project. Uh, the Lonely Skeins project, right? So the Lonely Skeins Project is a um, looking back at my 2024 goals to knit up my Lonely Skeins. Those are things that are left over from other projects or just souvenir skeins that I have picked up along the way. They have been stressing me out. So I decided um, that I would start a year-long project to knit up some of that hopefully most of that yarn. And I've invited you all to join me. And a lot of you have, and it has been so fun to see your projects. Um, so this is on Instagram, or if you don't have Instagram, my email, which my email is down in the description below. And um, you can email your entry to me. This is a finished object prize. So I'm not really worried about what the object is or how many lonely skeins you used in it. The point is just, if you've got skeins lying around, they're feeling a little lonely, we're going to knit them up in the Lonely Skeins Project. Um, so a lot of fun projects have been popping up on Instagram so far. I am going to include those at the end of the video. So I will put timestamps down below if you're antsy and just need to check out those projects now. Feel free to skip ahead, just make sure you come back. Um, and if it's something that you're into, then definitely give us, uh, join us. And it is, that got really awkward. I don't know why that got really awkward. Anyway, join us. <laughs> I am going to do a prize. I've not announced it yet. I've got to kind of bring it into being. So this project is going from now, I guess, um, until the end of September. You have plenty of time throughout the year to throw in those lonely skeins, and yes, you can have more than one entry. Speaking of videos and things you will see um, throughout this video, or this episode, and other episodes, 
um, along the way as well. I do just have to brag on my husband for the most incredible birthday gift. Um, I have been asking, so we live in Music City. Um, this room is actually a shared hobby space, which is terribly messy right now, so I'm not going to show you, but you can kind of see some guitars hanging out in the background, usually from time to time. Um, my husband is a sound engineer. He has his own studio here in Nashville. And my theme song was actually created by one of our dear friends, Kristen uh, Castro. The theme song came before the podcast. That's a fun fact. Um, the podcast had to come into being because they made me a theme song. Um, I walked in one day, they were having vocal rehearsals in this room, actually. And I made a joke that I needed a theme song for the podcast that existed only in my head. And they gave me the theme song, so the podcast had to come into being. But in that, one of the things that's kind of funky about podcasts is we show a lot of B-roll, you know, those like slides and videos um, throughout that isn't us talking, but may just be something in the background. And generally speaking, most of us want to have music playing there, but you get into dealing with issues with licensing. Anyway, we're going down a path that you don't really need to know about or you may not even care about. But what is really awesome is I have been asking my husband, can you please make me some B-roll music? And for my birthday, he did. So I introduce you to the Knit Weekend Group Volume 1 Music for the Weekend. Um, my husband's also a cartoonist, so that's hence the cute little sheep playing the guitar. And so you will be hearing this music um, throughout you know, any of the videos that play um, during the podcast, which I mean, just how sweet is that? Um, I've also been trying to convince him that there's a total market for knitting podcast theme songs because I really think there is. Anyway, um, so those are all the things that I wanted to share with you before we get into whips and finished objects. I am on a little bit of a time crunch today because I still have to go to the grocery store. So if I fly through them, that's why. I also feel like I'm talking fast, which I tend to always do when it's been a little bit between filming. I just get really excited to be here and um, talk with you. And I probably need to take a chill pill, but I'm hoping that you'll just bear with me. And I guess before we get into, the other thing before we get into finished objects and whips is I should tell you what I am wearing. I am wearing my Moby Slipover. Uh, this is a pattern by Petite Knit. I have knit this in Hillsvog uh, Tenda, which was one of the recommended yarns for the pattern. I don't have any of this left, actually. I used, I think I only ended up having like maybe 10 grams left and just somewhere back in a little scrap bag. Um, this is a DK weight yarn, uh, Norwegian wool yarn that I did purchase actually in Norway. As you've seen in previous episodes, we drove to the woolen mill to at the back of a fjord and purchased this yarn. So, um, I am pretty pleased with the fit, although I will say I've kind of lately been playing with the idea of making it a little shorter, going back in and taking maybe two inches off. Um, let me stand up and show you. Okay, so it's great with jeans, but I had really envisioned this more with some of my high-waisted work pants. Um, so I don't know, we still may do it, but over overall, I would say we're like a nine out of 10 on um, this slip over. Also, it is currently, I think like 68 degrees in Nashville. Um, I don't know what the conversion on that is if you're um, in Celsius, but it's pretty warm. So vests tend to be very practical in our area. Um, and I think you will see a few more vests popping up from me this spring too. So, um, as far as this pattern goes, very approachable as if you want to get into cables, these are faux cables in the front. So there's really only one, um, yeah, one cable and the rest is just knits and pearls and knit two togethers and this sort of stuff. So it's a very approachable pattern, very clearly written as most petite knit patterns are. And, um, 
also bonus that you don't have to knit the sleeves. So <laughs> if you want to try out cable knitting, this is a pattern that I would recommend to you to do so. Okay, speaking of cables, should we talk about finished objects now? We're just going to go for it. We're going to go straight into the finished objects and then we'll go through the whips. Um, you're not going to believe it. Well, you may believe it. You may have been wondering when the heck is she going to do it? Well, the must have cardigan is done. It is finished. Um, although I am noticing that I've not taken the stitch markers off behind the buttons. So maybe as I talk, I will do that and then it will be actually finished. Um, so I cast this sweater on, gosh, I don't know when, December 1st, I think. Um, it has been a long haul of a project. That is for many, uh oh. You guys, I think I sewed the stitch marker in. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Got it. Um, so that. It has been a long haul project for many reasons. Um, primarily, it's because I really just wanted to make sure I got it right. I am over knitting things and not being pleased with how they fit me. Um, I'm just over it. I have been knitting now for two and a half years and I just want to love everything that I knit. Now I know that that's maybe an unrealistic expectation, but if that means that I can take my projects a little bit slower and end up with something that I really love, then that's what I want to do. Um, the other reason is this is a free pattern. Um, so it's not a super descriptive pattern and it is also a seamed pattern with a set in shoulder. And I think we talked about that in the last episode. Um, all of my kind of seeming ideas and tips. So we're not going to get that into that here. If you would like that, then go back to the last episode, the last whip update for February, and you will find all that information there. Um, so this, I did do a couple mid project blocks. I kind of knit it in pieces very slowly testing one piece out before knitting the next piece and just kind of took it step by step in order to get this done. Um, I have not really worn it much yet because I just finished the button band yesterday. Um, so let's talk about the button band. That's the only piece I think on this that you have not seen. Well, I think last time you saw it, we had the body and one sleeve. The other sleeve was blocking and we did not have a button band. So um, sleeves, we talked about that a couple episodes ago. We're not going to go there. The button band, let me show you what I decided to do. We talked about last time, did I want to stick with the horizontal two by two button band that was shown in the pattern or did I want to go with something vertical? Well, that blew out terribly, didn't it? I could tell when I took it away. Beep. Okay. All right. We, <laughs> sorry about the color. We went with a vertical button band. Um, I had a couple people comment that they agreed that it would just look much more modern. And I did do a one by one rib. It look, it may look double knit. It's not, it's just a one by one rib. It is applied afterwards. And I did go with a three stitch buttonhole so that I could use these large buttons. I thought about going like full on nautical with some gold buttons, but these are what I have um, at my house. So that's what I used. Um, I love this type of button band actually and the way that I handled this is I, I did because I wasn't 100% sure on the length and I knew that the button band would kind of constrict the length a little bit and to give myself an easy out I actually started the button band back here and then I knitted down the front side of each uh, of each side so that I could make adjustments to the length easier without having to remove the entire button band if I decided it wasn't to my liking. Um, the good news is it was to my liking. Um, I wore this just a little bit this morning and I have to say, I think I nailed the fit. I think, I think I did um, for what I was looking for. So the other thing about the button band is I took the time 
to do something a little different. Okay, well, I did just realize one other thing that's not done here is I have not actually like finished off the back of the buttons with the strands of thread that are hanging out because I wanted to make sure I got the button pr placement right. But on the back side of the buttons, I did these clear buttons. I had been reading and hearing um, from Instagram and other podcasters that if you do clear buttons on the back, it distributes the weight of the button band a little bit uh, more evenly and keeps the buttons from pulling on the button band in an unsightly way. So I was able to find like kind of a sampler pack on um, Amazon, which you know you could use to make music or just have for buttons. Um, so that it's got a bunch of different sizes so that I'll be able to use this uh, for future projects. So pro tip on the buttons, clear buttons on the back help distribute the weight a little bit more evenly. Um, and yeah, so I think we should probably try it on so that you can see. So I'm going to press pause quickly, do a little costume change, and then we can look at the fit. All right, so the vibe that I was going here, going for here was kind of like a classic grandpa Cardi. Um, and I think I did it. Uh, to achieve that, I made some modifications to the sleeve. I did um, knit a sleeve size larger than what I had, what I knit for the body. And I took out, there is a rather large cable uh, right here that I did omit so that it would have a little bit more room in the sleeve. So. Let me push the camera back so you can see what it looks like. So I think overall, I am really satisfied. Are we all back in the same position that we were? I think overall I am super satisfied with the fit of this. The sleeves ended up being a smidge longer than what I had intended them to be. Um, I could fix that. It's going to involve ripping out a set in shoulder, ripping back the sleeve calf, and then re-knitting it. Um, so realistically I'm probably not going to fix it. Let's just be honest. Um, I can just roll the cuffs up a little bit more. Uh, so on the cuffs, I did intentionally make a rolled cuff. So I do have an extra long rib cuff and then I have rolled that up. That's one of the major modifications that I made all the way around the cardigan was my rib is much longer on the bottom hem. It's much longer on the cuffs. And then um, the rib on the button band was just too small. So I went vertical there. Um, I had been seeing... This thing collects lint like crazy. I've been seeing a lot of relaxed uh, cable cardigans in the commercial uh, world. So that was kind of where I was going for with it or what I was going for with this. And yeah, I'm pretty pleased. I think the must have cardigan from other people who have knit this can be a really hard project to accomplish because it actually is a fairly fitted um, cable cardigan without a lot of positive ease. So and just in a modern silhouette, it doesn't always look the same. Um, so if you're gonna knit this, I would encourage you to really look at adding more positive ease than recommended in the pattern. And then on the sleeves, um, just deciding if you want the tight sleeve like the pattern has, or if you want something more relaxed, you can easily omit the um, major cable, which is actually this same cable here. This cable is meant to be repeated here and I've omitted that to give it that more relaxed fit. Um, the other thing that I would add about this this cardigan is I have knit this in the shepherd's wool um, from Stonehenge Fiber Mill and I think it's a great yarn. It has fabulous st stitch definition, fantastic for cables. I am used to knitting in something that has a bit more air in the fiber. Um, this yarn is a semi-worsted that is spun from merino top. So it's a pretty dense yarn, if I do say so myself. And um, it has made for a pretty kind of weighty, heavy cardigan. So 
I'm slightly concerned to see how it stretches over time with wear, um, but I will just have to see how that goes and let you know. Um, overall, I think it's great. But yeah, if I were gonna knit this again, I think I would probably knit it in a wool and spun yarn so that it's a little bit lighter weight. Um, I think that's my main thought on things that I would do differently. Um, like I said, if you are just seeing this for the first time, Everyone else here is very well aware of this project due to the last three episodes of Whip Updates, so please go back and watch those. Also, I will add my notes to Ravelry. No promises that they'll be up before this episode releases, but I'll try to get some photos and get some notes up for you as well. I feel like in the last episode, because I did not really have any new whips to share with you. It was like a little stale or something. I don't know. I definitely can understand the um, urge or kind of idea to do a whole bunch of cast-ons when you're trying to produce podcast episodes because it gives you something to talk about for an hour. Um, in that vein, I did not cast on a whole bunch of projects with that in mind. It just kind of happened coincidentally. Um, I do have some new whips for you. At one point, I actually had more whips going than what I feel comfortable with personally. I'm usually like a maybe two, maybe three whip kind of girl. And um, I think I ended up having like four whips going at once, which is just too much for me to manage. Um, so in order to do that, I employed uh, my friend Mia's milestone knitting strategy, which is where you basically knit until you hit like a milestone mark. So splitting for the sleeves or finishing your body or getting the button band done and then you switch over to another project to make progress there as well. And I have to say Mia, good tip um, because I definitely made some progress on whips. So the first whip that I'm gonna share with you, um, guess what you guys haven't even seen this. This was cast on because I had a sleeve um, blocking I was waiting on another yarn to try out for my artist shawl and we were about to hit the road to go to Cincinnati. So I knew that I had to cast something on and it had to be something relatively simple. In the last episode, I dived into my lonely skeins bin to pull out two skeins that I was gonna cast on a project with. Um, no surprise probably that I did not actually cast on with those two skeins yet. It's coming, I promise the next time I'll have something in those skeins. Um, but when I did that, I rediscovered several plates of Plodulopi that I had in stash. So I decided it was time after, I think, a two years of admiring this pattern to cast on Ozetta's Traveler's Cardigan. By the way, did I mention this was the episode of the cardigan? It's the episode of the cardigan. We're gonna have, it's, it's a pretty cardigan heavy episode. Um, so I cast on the Traveler's Cardigan by Ozetta and I made some pretty good progress. So I've been working on this since I guess the first week of February. So about four weeks in and amongst all of my other whips. Um, if I hadn't been working on anything else, I probably would have finished this in just about two weeks, honestly. It knit up very quickly and very easily. So all that I have left to do is do the bind offs, um, which I am gonna do a tubular bind off and um, then do the buttons and then they're done. So, or then it's done. Um, like I mentioned, I'm knitting this in Plotilopi. That's not the intended yarn. Um, the intended yarn is Wool Dreamer's Manchalopi. And I do have a um, cardigan that I have knit in Manchalopi. I'm going, while I loved knitting with that yarn, I'm going to be pretty honest and tell you that I don't think that it wore as well as I would have liked it to. Um, it did have a lot of pilling, so if you're somebody who's concerned about pilling, just be aware, probably pairing it with a silk um, mohair is gonna help with that. Um, and it didn't tend to hold its shape very much. So I kind of decided for this project, not only did I have the Plotilopian stash, but I wanted something a bit more substantial for this cardigan. Okay, just a quick edit. Um, while I, you will notice I'm wearing something different, so you'll know this is edited, so I might as well just go ahead and own it. Um, 
while I'm talking about what yarn I chose for my traveler's cardigan, I did, um, oh, it's upside down. What yarn I chose for my traveler's cardigan. I did just also want to give another recommendation to you, and that is my friend Mia um, did a fabulous podcast on knitting with unspun yarn. So if you've not tried unspun yarn before, Plotolopi is an unspun yarn. Um, the intended para yarn, Manchalopi, is also an unspun yarn. They are a little tricky to knit with at first because you can, as you're knitting with them, just kind of pull them apart very easily. If you are somebody who tends to tug very tightly on your yarn, you may experience that, but that does not mean that they are impossible to knit with. Um, I'm an English style knitter and I have no problem knitting with uh, Plotilope. It's a little stronger and denser than Manchalope. So if that's your only exposure to unspun yarn, um, it's a beautiful, beautiful yarn, but it is a little bit more fragile than the Plotilope. So if you had trouble with that, you might not throw unspun yarn out altogether. You might give another one a try. Um, and you can either knit with it double or single stranded. I have knit my Traveler's Cardigan held double. Um, the main trick to knitting with unspun yarn is really simple, guys. It's just literally, you're going to pull it off the plate um, and knit with it just kind of without any tension from the plate. And that is really like the whole key to not having your unspun yarn break on you. Now, pretty much I can knit with it without any breakage. Um, with the exception of if, you know, my husband or my cat sits on my knitting, then I probably will break. But guess what? It's just a really easy split, split splice to put it back together again. Okay, my hair is crazy from all these wardrobe changes. Back to our regularly scheduled whip content. Um... And you will notice that I do have one side of the button band. This is the inside of the button band that is in a light gray plotilope. And that is simply because I was really nervous about running out of yarn and really did not want to order a whole bunch more. Not to mention, I had the plotilope in stash for three years, I think. So getting the same dye lot was not going to be a possibility. Um, even though it's in dark gray and a dye lot probably wouldn't have mattered. So a few details about this pattern. Um, I have knit it pretty well to pattern with one big exception. This pattern, Ozetta has written to have the button band knit um, at the same time as the body of the cardigan. And you do that by using double, point ne double pointed needles um, so that you're actually knitting on two different sizes of needles at the same time. I decided not to do that for a couple reasons. One, I really didn't want to have to think about this project very much. I just kind of wanted to zoom through the body of it. Um, and two, I struggle with buttonhole placement. I just do. I never know when I'm knitting um, a cardigan top down or bottom up, either way. I never really know what length I want to end at. And so it's hard to know where to place my buttonholes. So my solution to that is if Cardigan has me knit the button band along with the pattern, I've just learned I don't do that. I have zero issue going back and picking up the button band later. And actually, I used the same um, exact button band method that I did for this cardigan here, um, which is not so different from what she recommends. It's still a one by one rib button band. Um, it is still, this one is uh, with the two stitch buttonhole where you just cast off on one row and cast on on the, ne on the next. And I think it really still rings true to the pattern um, and gives it the same look for sure. The other small thing I noticed in this pattern, what was a little bit different is she suggests to do a decreased row of knit two togethers on the sleeve. And then she said something really interesting in the pattern, which is you can continue to knit and stockinette until the sleeve is the length that, you know, is just shy of where you want the cuff to be. Does that make sense? 
you can continue to knit in stockinette leaving you know whatever it is two inches of length um, for the cuff and I honestly had never seen that in a pattern before and was kind of curious about what shape that would create for the sleeve and um, I have to say I really think it created a pretty cool um cuff so I, I'll I'll do you all I'm like share today with my wardrobe changes I'll do another wardrobe change in just a second to show you um but anyway so what I did was I did my knit two together around I knit one more round on the same size needle and then I dropped down to the needle for my cuffs and knit one more around there before then going into the one by one rib on my cuff I'm really pleased with the shape of the sleeve. I'm a little skeptical on the tightness of the cuff. Um, I may, well, I, after I block it, if it's still pretty tight, then I may go back in and actually rip out the cuff and go up a needle size um, for the cuff just to give it a little bit more room because it's pretty tight on me. But Overall, this cardigan does exactly what I want it to do. Um, it was really fast. It really didn't take a lot of brain power and kind of got me back in my knitting mojo. Also have really been craving a dark gray cardigan for my wardrobe. So, okay, let me go do a costume change. Okay, with all the strands and cords hanging off of me, obviously I'm not gonna wear this the rest of the episode, but I did just wanna show you quickly the sleeve and the shape that it forms, which is here. So it has, yeah, a kind of nice balloon. I'm really skeptical of balloon sleeves mostly, um, being somebody who's petite, but I generally trust Ozata. We're about the same size and measurements, so um, I thought I would just go with it and see where it lands me. And I think it's pretty good. What do you think? The next whip is new and also maybe a little unexpected, I would say. Unexpected for me, so probably on a, oh, I just gave you a sneak peek. Oh, dang. I was trying to like surprise. Um, anyway, so I think it's unexpected in two ways. One is the color is unexpected for me. And two, it's a test knit, which if you've been here for any length of time, you know I so rarely do test knits. Um, I've had a couple bad experiences, more good experiences than bad experiences. I have um, done a lot of test knits or a few test knits for Ozetta, um, hence the Traveler's card again. I highly recommend her test knits. If you want to get into test knitting, her test knits are great. There's a lot of community. Her patterns are already tech edited by the time they make it to her testers and she is super responsive and gets back to you quickly with answers when you need them so definitely recommend her test knits but test knits can be a little hard because one you're knitting on a time clock and there is a lot of responsibility that you have to to the designer when you're test knitting um you're you are giving them a service. Um, you're giving your time. You're spending your money on the yarn because most of the time designers do not provide um, yarn support for their test knits and um, they really do need your feedback. It's a really important part of the design process um, so that when the pattern makes it into the hands of the knitter, it's clear and there aren't a whole lot of errors. Um, so, I take test knitting very seriously. In the past couple of years, I just haven't been in a space in my life where it's been something that I've even wanted to take on. But I saw a test call for this pattern. I knew that I wanted to knit something fluffy for spring and I wanted to knit something striped for spring. And this test call had them both. So, and also had a really long test window, I think like 12 weeks, which is pretty well unheard of. Um, so I decided to apply and that's the other thing. When you apply for a test knit, oh gosh, the waiting and you're like stalking Instagram to see, are people starting this project? Did I get the test knit? Did I not get the test knit? And you kind of get in your head a little bit about it, but deep breath and I just remind myself that whatever is meant for me will be. And if this isn't the project, then 
there's something else that I'm meant to be knitting, but I did um, get accepted to the test knit, so I was very excited, and I am test knitting the Tides cardigan, not the pullover, but the cardigan for Rebecca Clo, the Crea Bea. Um, is there a podcaster out there who is not currently test knitting for Rebecca between the lotter, I think with the lotter um, patterns? No, no, I think we're all test knitting for Rebecca. Um, and I guess I'm just joining that club. So this is my first test knit for Rebecca and so far it's been just fine. Um, there's a really sweet little Instagram group where everybody's shown their photos and talked about their progress. They ask questions and um, I'm a little behind the other testers. I also feel like every podcaster says I'm a little behind the other testers. Anyway, I'm a little behind the other testers. Um, that is because I was determined to get my must-have cardigan finished. <laughs> And also, quite frankly, I was kind of letting some people get out in front of me to work out some of the kinks before I divided for the front and the back. So this is the body. I'm undecided on the length. I may add a few more rows. I need to, um, there's a specific row of the lace repeat that she says to split for your sleeves and your back um, or for your front and your back on. So I'm undecided if I'm going to add a few more rows to get to that or if I'm actually going to take out the last two green rows. But I am knitting this in Sandus Garn, their brushed alpaca version. Hang on. And the box right here. Um, knitting this in the brushed alpaca in... Ooh, and cream and lime green. I'm showing it to you this way because I just feel quite fancy like this. Um, isn't it gorgeous? This is, I ordered this from Garntopia. That's one of my best kept secrets, guys. Garntopia is a Norwegian yarn store. They have super fast shipping to the US and you can get a lot of um, Norwegian and Danish yarns from them at much less cost than buying them from US retailers. Um, I am aware there are environmental carbon issues with shipping them from the U.S. or to the U.S. and um, just not going to go there at the moment. So this is the brushed alpaca and it is a thicker um, alpaca yarn. So it is not a lace weight yarn. This is, I think they, I think they say it's an Aran weight yarn. So this is 110 meters for 50 grams. And the stitch gauge is anywhere from 12 to 18 stitches. Recommended needle size is four to seven. This is 96% alpaca and 4% nylon. So it does have a little bit of the science-y stuff in it. I am knitting mine in sunny lime and also natural. Now I could not find the sunny lime anywhere except Garntopia. Um, I think Mother Knitter had some, but they only had two skeins of it, and that was not going to be enough. Um, I don't know why, but the minute that I saw this pattern, this these were the colors that came to my mind. In hindsight, I kind of wish I had gone with like a light gray and the lime, or a dark gray and the lime. That would have been like very Jen Guidley if you watch her, um, but anyway. We're just rolling with it because I'm not ordering any more yarn. So thoughts on the Tides cardigan so far, which Rebecca has not finished her cardigan sample. So we are just kind of knitting that a bit blind. I'm not too worried about it. I assume it'll be similar to the pullover um, in its vibe when it's finished. Um, I am interested to see how she works out the button band and what she chooses there or, you know, maybe I can do a vertical button band. We'll see. You guys know that I love those. Um, so thoughts on this pattern. This is a super easy lace repeat to memorize. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of lace knitting. I love this, love this, love this, love this. And the yarn is just fabulous. It is exactly what you want after working with something really wooly for a little while, it is such a treat to your fingers. 
Um, so all in all, pretty pleased with this so far. I am working on size five millimeter needles. So that is actually a full millimeter up from the recommended. She recommended size four millimeter. And I think there are quite a few testers working on size five. So it does knit up pretty quickly on um, the larger size needle, I think. And um, the other, oh, the other thing is she kind of left it up to the testers what width of stripe we wanted to use. I think the pattern recommends a stripe that is 10 rows. I decided to go with eight. I did some swatching, which I don't have with me. Um, hang on, let me go grab them back with my swatches. So I did some swatching for some different widths of the stripes. Um, this one is a 12, 12 row stripe and this one is the eight row. And I decided to go <clears throat> with the thinner stripe because being petite, generally a thinner stripe is going to be more flattering than a wider stripe. And I knew that I wanted to change my yarn on um, row two of the lace repeat because that was just gonna be easier than trying to remember which row I'm on and count them. So I just always know that I've, if I'm on a row two, then it's a potential for a color change. Um, so, and I think there are a couple other people who took that same approach too, but they went with the wider stripe. Um, yeah, this is such a soft yarn. It is everything that I wanted for my fluffy spring striped project. So excited to see this come along. I'm almost going to say by the time the April whip update rolls around, this should be done. First of all, the testament is due um, in the second week of April. So it needs to be done if, if I haven't podcasted before then. I have one other whip. Um, you guys have seen it before. I really haven't made much project progress on it. Um, but I will just briefly show you in case it is your first time finding this podcast that you will know that I do have in the works the Artist Shawl by Natasha Hornsby. Natasha Hornby. I don't know why I always want to put an S in there. Do you, do you also always want to put an S in there? Um, so I haven't made much progress here. Just a few rows. I did join this, the next color, the fifth and final color. Um, which I went with my original color selection and chose to stick with the teal. Um, you may remember in the last episode, I said that I had ordered more yarn, but it had not yet arrived. The color that I ordered, I thought this was going to be darker. Um, it actually looks really dark here. In person, it's much more of a brighter blue. It looks much closer to this color blue. So um, I did decide to stick with the teal. I think I may use this for something else. I have a couple ideas um, and it may be a color work project since I said I wanted to try that this year. Um, but anyway, so I did stick with my original yarn. Oh, and I'm gonna say I am using needle stitch stoppers for the first time. Um, these came in an order that I did from uh, Montrico uh, in Canada, and I just adore Lucinda and the yarns that she stocks. I wanted to get a specific yarn that I think may not be produced in the same um, kind of manner any longer, and she threw in these cute little stitch stoppers to my order, so I've been quite enjoying them. Um... But I am knitting the artist shawl in the intended yarn, which is the lichen and lace rustic heather sport. So I'm going to leave it at that for the artist shawl project for this time. Um, because like I said, not really much project progress. I do have some more thoughts I want to share with you on that project. Um, but we'll wait until we are maybe finished. Who knows? Could I finish it by next time? I think I think I could. I think I could. We'll see. I don't know. I hear that seven stitch I cord edge is a beast. Um, all right. So that is all for finished objects and whips for this time. Um, if you want to hang with me a little bit longer, I would love for you to do that because I want to show you some of my spinning adventures.
I've done some spinning. So before I go into all of this with you, um, in the last episode that I put up from February, I was talking about how I was feeling a little, oh, I don't know, bogged down in my spinning. Um, I think that's because I decided to undertake two like pretty hefty um, skeins and instead of just like having fun and sampling a bunch of different things and I didn't really know what I was doing and so I was just doing it and feeling pretty bored. Um, I got the sweetest, sweetest parcel and it came the day after my birthday so it felt like a really big exciting moment. Um, this is from my friend Madison. Um, she has a podcast, Madison Montes. She is a very talented um, knitter, spinner, we weavist, weaver, weaver, weaver. We're going with weaver, right? Um, and she's based in New York. I had the pleasure of meeting her and her mom at the fleece sale at Rhinebeck. And she saw my podcast and reached out and sent me a little happy mail. First of all, How cute is the little sheep doodle? I'm like full of sheep doodles this episode and I love it. If you have any sheep doodles that you want to send me, <laughs> I will show them on this podcast. Um, so she sent me two things to practice with. She said, first of all, she wanted to send me this Three Waters Farm um, BFL top to practice a fractal, fractal spin. Um, yeah, sorry, you can't really see because the glare from the windows. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I think a fractal spin is basically where you kind of intentionally lay out your color choices and um, you are spinning necessarily one or two colors together. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know, just, just Google it. I'm gonna Google it before I do it, obviously. <laughs> Um, it's just a more intentional way to spin, uh, color and fiber. And then the other thing that she sent me, uh, this one like almost made me cry. I think it may have made me cry. Um, this is 50 grams of one of her bats that she has carded. So this is to practice, um, a long draw or a woolen, um, draft. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Um, so that is CVM, Falkland Merino, and Hanoi, uh, and Silk. I am floored. Um, Madison, thank you so much for your generosity. Guys, this is not an ad. This is just a friend gift, and, um, I am so blown away time and time again about the generosity and welcoming nature of this community that we all have a part of. Sorry, I realized that was like really rustling and probably very loud as I was talking. <laughs> this, I'm going to put it down. Um, Madison, thank you. I am just always continually blown away by the people that I have met on this amazing fiber journey. And every trip that I take, I get to meet the most incredible people. And I just feel like you make friends for life. So if you have an opportunity to meet meet another knitter, spinner, fiber friend in person, and you have the opportunity to travel and do all that, by all means, do it. Don't be shy to reach out to somebody and say, hey, I'm going to be in your area. Let's get together because there's just some amazing people out there. Okay, so on to the spinning that I have done. Um, I have been, for some reason, super intimidated, 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 int intimidated about finishing my hand spun yarn. So if you are not a spinner, basically you spin the yarn and then you have to finish it, not unlike how you block a sweater, um, usually involving soaking and a handful of other things to kind of finish the yarn, activate the twist before you knit with it. Um, it helps the yarn bloom and it just kind of makes it into its final state of being. I don't know why I have been so intimidated by this. I just have been. 
I did um, in the past couple of weeks download the Yarn Texture book on my iPad to read. I decided to go with the Kindle version so that it could travel with me. Um, so that if I have my spinner on the go, then I have a reference to work from as opposed to having to bring a book. So yesterday I finally finished all of my white, um, fibers. So this is my first skein of the hand spun. I showed you this last time, but it had not yet been finished. This is tea water. And this is the long wool. I have to say, um, after finishing it bloomed quite nicely. It is still underspun. Zero doubts there. This will not be knit into a garment. This will be knit into, I think, a wall hanging for our summer cabin, um, which will just be a fun project. Um, and then I had a little bit of, I think, leftover tea's water um, in this little guy. Then I also took on some Romney. Um, and Romney, I think, is more of a medium wool. I'm still learning, so whatever I say that is wrong, please don't put me on blast. Um, and this was my first skein of Romney that I did. I have not yet... Um, Kind of figured out what this is but just based off of the look i'm i'm assuming this would be a bulky weight yarn so i decided that for my next go i was going to try to really be more consistent and i was going to try to get the yarn down into either a dk or a worsted weight yarn and this is the first skein that i have actually done a plyback sample on as i was knitting it and i think it is much more consistent than the others I'm actually pretty pleased. This is gonna be a worsted weight yarn. Um, and yeah, it's it's pretty, it is pretty consistent. So I am going to attempt to recreate this with the rest of my Romney fiber to see if I can actually perhaps knit um, maybe a beanie or something like that in my own hand spun yarn, which feels oh like a really hard thing to do right now in my brain but I think I can do it um so pretty pleased with that some other yarns that I've played with that I have not yet finished um this is my second whopping skein this is Cordale um I'm assuming this is probably going to be another bulky weight and then I did um, spin up a little bit more and try to spin it a little bit thinner and I would say probably air and weight. So I am getting more consistent over time. I'm excited to finish these to see what they come out with uh, or come out like. Um, these are uh, more long wool fibers in the finishing. So um, I the the tease water that was under spun, I just did a soak and then I squeezed it between some towels and let it dry. Um, the other ones, I, the Romney, I used centrifugal force, um, after I soaked it. And then on the tease water kind of little mini guy, um, I snapped it. So let me know in the comments below if you, what your preferred method is for finishing Cordale. Um, this is a worsted draft, um, short forward. If that helps, does that matter? I think it, I don't know, I don't know. Still learning what matters and what doesn't. Um, have discovered, I think, that my preferred draft right now. Now I've got not really gotten into woolen um, drafting yet, but I think my preferred draft right now is a short backward draft. And that is what I used on these two. And these two, I think are also my favorite fibers that I've played with so far. Um, this I just did today, just spun up and plied today. This is a Jacob, uh, fleece. This is so good. I love that. Um, it is a multicolored top. If you're not a spinner, I think what's really cool about, um, Jacob wool is that you find all the colors usually in the same sheet. So if you look up these photos of these cute little sheets here, I'll just pop one here. 
Um, the sheep is so cute and you often get both the white and the black uh, fiber from the same sheep. So that is what is here. Now, do I have a way of knowing if this black and white is from the same sheep? No, I do not. Um, but it is a very cool fiber to work with. Um, and then the other one that I have really enjoyed working with, which I think I've decided this is going to be my first sweater spin. So I will need to order more of it. But the Manx Lockton, this little baby guy, this is the first one that I really felt like I had a lot of success with. Um, I really enjoyed spinning this. It was super easy to work with and um, it created a really even yarn, very, very squishy. And I'm excited to finish that as well to see how it turns out. I did try one more thing and got a wee bit out over my skis on this one. Um, when we went to Cincinnati a few weeks ago, my aunt and I stopped in at the Woolery and I decided to get some Merino top to play with. I am not ready for Merino. I am, I am not there, guys. I'm just not there. So this is a combo spin of two different um, color variations of Merino top from Malabrigo. I decided because that's a fairly inexpensive one. If I was gonna learn, I wanted to learn on something less expensive. Um, and I'm just not quite ready to draft Merino yet, I think. Um, may also be the commercial, um, commercially prepared Merino may be a little bit difficult too because it was just completely sticking together. And I, being the under spinner that I appear to be, definitely needed more twist um, in both my ply and in the singles. So just, you know, playing with stuff, seeing how it goes, and that's how we learn, right? Um, yeah, so those are my spinning adventures. I'm spinning on my Ashford 3 E spinner right now. Um, I decided that I wasn't quite ready to do this. To, see, I, I, yeah, wasn't quite ready to do the hands and the feet at the same time. So I started with an E spinner and pretty pleased with that decision. Oh, um, in the last episode, I also mentioned that I had started, um, on, an electric eel wheel that was lent to me by a friend and um, that I was having trouble with consistency there because the power is also the speed. I did have a couple people comment that the electric eel wheels do have a uh, pedal option that you can plug in a pedal to be able to turn it on and off without adjusting the speed. So wanted to make sure that I passed that along to you as well. I intended for this to be a pretty short episode and I'm not really sure how we did on that. To be quite honest, there were lots of stops and starts. Um, but if you've made it this far into the episode, thank you. I so appreciate you hanging out with me today. I hope you will come back again next time. Um, I know that I owe you some episodes, so I still, I'm working on preparing the recreating commercial knits episode. Um, that's taking a lot of legwork. My hair really doing weird things today with all the costume changes. Um, some other ideas that I've kind of been playing with in my mind, um, an episode about swatching maybe, hot topic. Um, and there was one other, I don't remember now what it was. Hmm. I don't know. I guess we'll come back to that. Um, but in any case, if there is something that you would like me to kind of share my thoughts or chat about in a future episode, please include that in the comments below. Um, and don't forget to do all the other podcasty things. Subscribe, like, tell a friend, leave a comment, say hi to dad. Um, and yeah, see you next time.